everyone. It's great to be back with you on a beautiful Monday evening. This is your 10 Minute Sports Report. I am your host, Captain Boyne. Thank you, everyone, for being here. All brand new episode of Fourth One Podcast coming out this Friday. So that will be the... Uh, my calendar didn't pop up, so I can't tell you, but it will be uh, exactly five days from now. So what is that, the 7th? Um, yes, so it will be uh, June 7th, all brand new episode of 4th and 1 Podcast. Go follow us on Instagram at 4th and 1 Podcast. All the words spelled out, 4th through podcast. All those words spelled out. Don't forget to like and subscribe here on YouTube. Share with your family and friends. Thank you all for being here. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. There's a new moneymaker in the NFL, and his name is Justin Jefferson. He agreed on a historic deal to remain with the Vikings. It was technically a contract extension. He agreed to a four-year, $140 million contract with a record $110 million guaranteed. The deal makes him the highest non-paid quarterback in NFL history. The deal, which was negotiated by WME Football, includes 88. 743 million due at signing. The Vikings announced Monday morning that Jefferson agreed to the extension that runs through the 2028 season, but that did not disclose the financial terms. Uh, this is kind of a no brainer for the um for the and uh, for Justin Jefferson or the Minnesota Vikings. So just to put his guaranteed money into specifics where it ranks, he got 110 million guaranteed money. The next closest is the Eagles wide receiver AJ Brown at 84. Next is Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, no relation, um 77 and then Jalen Waddle at 76. So I mean he he dwarfed everyone. Now what is kind of and I'll get back to why it's a no brainer for both the parties. C D Lamb, who is the Cowboys wide receiver, he also once paid. they they were in the same draft. C D Lamb and Justin Jefferson. And their numbers offensively for like production are almost identical. CD actually has more touchdowns than Justin Jefferson, but in terms of catches, Justin Jefferson made one more all all pro team than CD Lamb. But other than that, CD Lamb has slightly more yards, a few more catches, and more touchdowns. So it'll be interesting to see what CD Lamb gets. Now, back to why this is a good deal for both parties. Justin Jefferson wants to be paid no and win. That's what he wants to do. No team that can win now, win a Super Bowl now, is going to give him this much money, is able to give this much money because it's either tied up in a defensive, a high-paid defensive member, a quarterback, another wide receiver, or a running back. That's just how how this works. So um, he gets his money. Franchise that is poised to win now. Vikings just drafted J.J. McCarthy, have Sandal Darnold, who's on the cheap. So if they even, the plan is for them to go to J.J. McCarthy eventually, they get four years of cheap J.J. McCarthy. Assuming he pans out, they get four years of cheap J.J. McCarthy, and they give him a target he can throw to right away, a bona fide superstar at wide receiver. This is a no-brainer for everybody involved uh in my personal opinion it just makes the most sense jj mccarthy will throw to justin jefferson hopefully a lot of touchdowns will come for both parties on that side and production and along with production comes wins playoff wins and hopefully super bowls that is the hope with justin jefferson getting 110 million guaranteed dollars Now, to kind of flip the corner of that and some sad news, Cowboys Hall of Famer Larry Allen dies suddenly at the age of 52. He died suddenly while he was on vacation in Mexico. At least he was on vacation and not at work. Larry, known for his great athleticism and incredible strength, was one of the most respected, accomplished offensive linemen ever to play in the NFL. The team said in a statement, his versatility and dependability were also signature parts of his career. Through that, he continued to serve as an inspiration for many other people, defining what it meant to be a great teammate, competitive competitor and winner. Uh, The team went on to say in a statement, Uh, Larry was a second round pick out of some, uh, some, some, I'm not even so, Sonoma, Sonoma State 
19 in 1994 quickly became one of the most dominant linemen in the nfl he was named to the pro bowl 11 times and was inducted into the pro football hall of fame in 2013 he played for the cowboys from 1994 to 2005 winning the super bowl in 95 he spent the final two seasons with the san francisco 49ers all right, let's take it on over to the ice where on Friday things happened, other things happened, and let's go from there. So on Friday, it was game five between the Edmonton Oilers and the Dallas Stars. Remember, I'm finding out this information when you do. And the series was tied at two. 80-some percent of teams, they win game five, go on to win the series. So this is a cri- pivotal critical game in this series and Ryan Nugent Hopkins got things started for Edmonton. He scored the first and second goal. Philip uh, Broberg followed up with a third one. It was three, nothing Edmonton at the end of the third. Wyatt Johnston got one back for Dallas in the third period. I'm sorry. At the end of the second, it was three, nothing Edmonton. Wyatt Johnston got one back at in the third period with about five minutes to go in the third period. But that was it. It was 3-0 Edmonton. They went on to win um, game five and take a commanding 3 to nothing lead to force Dallas on the brink of elimination. Then let's go to Saturday. It was game six. It was an elimination game for the best team in hockey, at least record-wise, during the regular season, the New York Rangers. They were in the hole 3-2 to two against the Florida Panthers, who were seeking a consecutive second consecutive trip to the NHL Finals. Well, Sam Bennett got things started in the first period, late in the first period, uh, in, in the 19-minute mark, in fact, in the first period. He got things started for Florida, one nothing. No goal scored in the second. Then Vladimir Tr- Tr- Tarasensko made it 2 nothing. Florida. Artemi Panarin got one goal back for the Rangers late in the third period. However, that was ball game. Panthers go on to win 2-1. to one. They win the series 4-2, to two, and they advance to a second consecutive Stanley Cup final where they will meet the Edmonton Oilers in game six on home ice. This took place Sunday, taking on Dallas, getting ready for elimination. Connor McDavid, one of the best players in all of hockey, showed up early. In the fourth minute mark of the first period, Connor McDavid puts one in the back of the net to make it one nothing Edmonton. Edmonton. Zach Hyman made it 2 0 just 10 minutes later in the first period, still. No goals in the second. Mason Marchment scored one goal for Dallas halfway through the third period. However, Dallas was unable to add any more, and they fall to the Edmonton Oilers 2 1, and they lose the series 4 2. So the Stanley Cup final is set. It starts Saturday. June 8th, Florida hosting Edmonton Oilers in game one of that series. So with that being said, I am not sure when I will be back because the NBA finals don't start until Thursday. The uh, Stanley Cup finals don't start until Saturday. So unless if something historic happens, this might be the last time you see me until maybe Friday. I'll definitely be back Friday to recap game one for you. You will get an all brand new episode of the 4th and 1 podcast Friday as well. Uh, And we will be previewing the Big Ten, one of the best conferences in college football. I'm excited. I'm excited to drop some hot takes. The boys, I'm kind of dragging them along. Not sure if uh, they're excited as much as I am, but... We will be there nonetheless. Until then, wash your hands, you filthy animal. Know God loves you. I hope God blesses you. And don't forget to comment down below. We'll see ya when we see ya. Until next time, everybody. Peace out. (laughs) 